Hello everybody, welcome back to Telescope Talk. This is a bi-monthly, bi-weekly, we don't know yet, uh, hangout series where we get together uh, and we talk about telescopes and amateur astronomy, the night sky, and all of that kind of fun stuff. And now, for this hangout, and we're going to do another one next week, we're going to be talking about the solar eclipse of 2017, also called the Great American Eclipse, just because we want to irritate the rest of the world. And, uh, and so, um, but it starts in a couple of weeks, August 21st, and we want to get you guys ready for it. And by us, I mean my co-hosts. Uh, the top there is Mr. John Suffolk. He is uh, a UK amateur astronomer extraordinaire. Uh, and down in the lower panel there is uh, Adam Synergy Smith uh, running. He, he is a podcast entrepreneur, among a great many other things. Hi, Adam and John. It's good to see you back. It's been a while. We took a break. Hello. Hello, Tommy. Yeah. Hello, Adam. So you Hello. guys are sitting here telling me, before we get started, how cloudy and rainy it's been in the UK. Uh, so I guess you, I guess getting excited about this eclipse isn't something, not to mention the fact that you won't be able to see very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't mean to be sound evil there. I'm sorry if I did. I it was just... Uh, I'm not rubbing it. I'm in. looking but we, it. but we are going to see it all over. It's going to be all over the United <laughs> States. The entire United States will see it. La, 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 la. So we are going to be. Ah, <laughs> it's going to be cloudy. Uh, wouldn't that suck? But even then, it would be hard to pull that off, John, because how are you going to get clouds over the entire United States in the middle of the summer? That would be interesting. Maybe you can. It probably will happen now that I've done this. <laughs> the way my luck is running anyway. Um, okay, folks. So anyway, we're going to introduce you to the eclipse. We're going to talk about what eclipses are. What's the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse? Why this one is so great? And what you can, how you can safely view this eclipse uh, with uh, stuff that you might just have laying around your house. And so, uh, because the three of us are very interested in getting you outside and looking up, we don't want you to spend a lot of money, and the good thing about an eclipse is you don't have to. So we want you guys to get involved. Join us in this discussion. Uh, we are looking at the live chat on YouTube. Philip W. is around, and Dale2676, midlife crisis is, wait a minute, crises. Yeah, you spelled that plural, dude. Are you having more than one? Uh, and Adam Synergy, of course. And then there's that guy who, UH4V, it looks like somebody's password for a <laughs> username. So welcome to our hangout. Susan Hunter's here. Zephyr Hills. Oh, I, I, that's my neck of the woods. So, um, Nick Hardy says lots of clouds in Holland too. So we, that's proof we are looking at these live chats. I'm also looking at Facebook and Twitch. I'm on Twitch right now. And um, nobody's there, but I am. So if you want to chat on Twitch, I hope you will, as well as I'm on Facebook. And again, no one's there, but I am. So there's that. So I want to take just a little brief moment here and tell you just how amazing this eclipse is. It is something that we don't get to see this often on the in the United States. Well, anywhere, really. Although they do happen somewhere on the planet about every year and a half, they don't always happen on the scale and when across such a populated area as they as this particular one is. I think the last time a an eclipse was seen through the, from coast to coast in the United States was like in 1918 or some some uh, ridiculous time back that back like that. So. This is your chance, folks. If you live in the United States and you don't mind driving a few hours, you can see a total solar eclipse. But if you don't feel like driving a few hours, then just stay where you are and watch a a, a, a partial one. So I'm going to show you something here. I want to put this up. I have a couple of slides that I'm going to go over here. And what this... This is an example of two different types of eclipses. Uh, on the right-hand side is the is a lunar eclipse. It's where the Earth's shadow passes between the, the moon and the uh, uh, sun. And the other side is a solar eclipse, where the moon is doing the same thing. And here is an example of what I'm talking about. If I uh, These are two basic types of eclipses. Here you can see that a solar eclipse is that top panel there. And the moon is right in between the Earth and the sun, and it's it's casting a very tightly beamed shadow. It doesn't cover the entire 
uh, the entire Earth, just a spot on it, which is why not everybody can see them. But a lunar eclipse is quite different. The moon uh, gets bathed in the shadow of the Earth, depending on the geometry of the situation. It, it may or may not cover all of the moon, but it doesn't turn it completely dark. You see, usually it, it, the atmosphere of the Earth uh, causes the moon to appear orangish red, usually. So uh, here's the geometry of a solar eclipse. This is what we're going to be seeing here. Um, <laughs> there are various kinds of it. The full shadow is where totality will occur, and that's in that little, that's in that little co cone right there. And then you get these other areas: the prenumbral shadow, and a part uh, the penumbra, penumbra, uh, as well as the umbral shadows. You can see those in different, uh, in different ways as well. So this is the geometry of what's going on. Now this eclipse, check this out, folks. This is who can see this thing. This thing is going to just cut right across diagonally across the whole, the entire continent of the United States. It's going to start in the morning around on the 22nd or 21st of August, uh, around 1020 Pacific time. These are all local times that you see across here. And I'm going to go somewhere over here. I'm going to go into South Carolina. I haven't decided where yet. Um, I'm just going to drive up there. This is about a four hour drive for me. I'm down here right now. So, um, and I'll show you what it looks like in both places, but, um, I'm going to drive somewhere up in South Carolina. So if any of you guys, if there's any space fans in South Carolina, let me know. And, it'll, and maybe I could stop by and say hi, or, um, we could just maybe, uh, maybe even meet up to see the eclipse if you, if you're in the area. So that's, I'm going there because that's the closest I thought about going to Tennessee, that's just a little too far away. So I'm going to stick down here. I'm going to go down to South Carolina or up to South Carolina and see it there. So that's where I'm going to go. Now, here is what they look like from space. The moon shadow is, is um, very dark toward the center. This is totality. And these are the other penumbral shadows that you see um, all over, you know, where you will see partial eclipses. Okay, so this is what they look like from space. And here's what they look like from Earth. If you use the right techniques that both um, John and Adam and I are going to talk about here in just a little bit. But uh, this is, you can see the, the eclipse this way, doing either through those solar eclipse glasses or through uh, pinhole projection, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So um, there's that. And then here's a partial solar eclipse again. So that is what's going to happen. And and um, depending on where you guys are, you'll be able to see all kinds of, you know, whether you'll see totality or whether you'll see uh, a partial solar eclipse depends entirely on where you are in the United States. So now your question is going to be, well, what am I going to see where I live? And I, it's funny you should ask, ask that question because I have this little thing here. It's it. This is a an app that you can download from uh, uh, JPL. It's called Eyes on the Solar System. And it's an app, both Windows and Macs. And on this app, they have a tour for the eclipse. And if you pull it up, which is what I've done here, um, you can see the, the path of totality across through here, as well as these different shaded regions. Now, if I start playing this, this does a really cool thing. See these uh, different models? This will show you what the sun will look like from space at a different at a different point along the, the, the eclipse's path. And if you want to see, and, and then on the right pane here is the view from Earth. This is what you're going to see. Now, I put in my location here in Florida, uh, what here, but with what I'm going to see. If I don't go to South Carolina, here is what I'm going to see. So let me just spin this up a little bit you see that i'm gonna i'm gonna be able to start seeing things around 11 30 in the morning my time okay and as the day progresses the sun, <coughs> oops, oh my my computer's really bogging down um let me back up a little bit okay so this is about i'm doing too many things with my computer it's totally <laughs> not liking this okay so um this is about as much as i will see 
uh, covered uh, from the moon, uh, from the sun, if I stay in Florida. However, oh, actually, I moved me out into the Bahamas for some reason. But let's go up here. If, if I go up to South Carolina, and I will see totality right there. And Whoa. this is something you just, you've got to see it to experience it. You don't need, you don't need anything expensive. In fact, you don't want, don't get any, don't bring any fancy stuff with you. Just bring yourself and maybe your, your cheesy little solar eclipse glasses. And that's it. Because believe me, it is astonishing just to be able to, you just, everything, the whole Air, the whole experience is just surreal. The clouds get dark, or the sky gets dark. Stars start to appearing appear in the daytime, and it starts getting cold. The temperature drops big time, and just it all happens in the course of just a few minutes. And you just want to look around and soak it all in and see what's going on. Um, na let NASA and the ground-based observatories let them get all the pictures of the solar corona and all the really high-tech fancy schmancy pictures that they're going to get pictures of prominences or whatever it is don't try to do that yourself just go and experience it so if you're up in south carolina this is what you see they have a this app has a few uh pre-built lo locations and and kansas city uh you'll be able to see uh totality and it gives you the times which it'll be around houston you're not going to see the whole the whole thing uh we won't you won't be in the path of totality but you will see it it'll look like this and if you're up in Vancouver and British Columbia, you will see this kind of thing. How long is it going to take to cross the uh, the continent? Uh, well, let's see. Yeah, if um, let me let me pause this so it doesn't eat up my computer resources. And if I go back to this uh, to this slide, it starts around. So what is that? Ten. 10 20 a.m or 10 20 a.m yeah uh pacific time and then goes up to about uh three o'clock or so eastern time subtract three hours uh for pacific so that's about three hours it's going to take to go all the way across the country well yeah about three hours long time. About three hours yeah, so it's a long time. And NASA is going to be doing all kind of cool stuff. I think they're going to have aircraft following along uh, to um, prolong the, the, the time in which they're in totality. They're going to fly along that path and, uh, and yeah. look at their instruments, things like that. So um, so they've got that plan. So they've got, they've got all the high-tech, fancy stuff already covered. And so um, I think it's our job. It's just, just regular people to just go out and experience this really it's going to be i think a once in a lifetime event now i say that i agree but yeah. i yeah i there was another one in 1979 uh where i drove up to um, helena montana from colorado i was in high school at the time and i took a picture um that i'm going to show you with the next hangout i don't know where it went but i have uh I, it was my very first astro photo and um and I uh, took it that during that, that during that solar eclipse. So uh, it was a really great experience, and I I cannot speak enough about how great it is to go. How, how, what about you guys? You tell me your experiences with solar eclipses. I saw a total solar eclipse here in the UK way, but well, eighteen years ago now, around this time of year. I think it was early August, nineteen ninety nine. It's a yeah. very, very, it, it's a very strange experience. I think it, it's a, an odd experience. It, it was a beautiful summer's day, uh, and then it gets dark in the middle of the day. There's, there's nothing else. There's no phenomena quite like it. You, I can understand how people, you know, back in uh, the Middle Ages or whatever, had superstitions about such event because it's quite powerful it has, does have quite a powerful effect on you yeah it really is it and, and there are some some animals really freak out uh during a solar eclipse because they don't know what's going on birds and and i'm told some some other animals kind of go nuts during the whole thing but yeah it really is kind of easy i mean you think back in the time before galileo or before copernicus 
uh, before people had a good handle on what was going on uh, in in the heavens uh, above their heads, and they were trying to figure out all these different patterns, the planets, why were they moving the way they were moving. You go on about your business, and then one day, the sun starts to disappear. I mean, you Ooh. that's got to freak somebody out. I mean, it would me if I had no idea what was going on up in space. If I didn't know what I know now, and I just start seeing the sun go away that's that's very unsettling and imagine if you're about to have a child or something at that same time because it happens right you can imagine that, oh my god it's cursed it's you know got all of these uh, uh bad omens associated with it now but i don't think people refl- think about well wait a minute you know it came back <laughs> yeah. so how you know why, why is that a bad omen uh, could have been a good omen um, because it came back. It's the same with comets. I don't get why people... That one is harder for me to understand. I can see people kind of going, whoa, what's that? That's kind of freaky. Uh, but they go away too. And, I'll, you know, so I, I I understand that less than I under, than I can get a solar eclipse. They, they're they freaky. They really are. I always thought it's an odd coincidence that the moon and the sun are the same size. Ah, okay. You brought up a good point. Let's talk about it. So, why is it that they have, and, and I, I think I'm right when I say that we are the only planet in the solar system that experiences eclipses, total solar eclipses this way. And the reason for it is that it's just a big, it's a big cosmic coincidence. Let me pull up a slide that shows you what I'm talking about. Um, they, do, they do have uh, small, small uh uh, eclipses on Mars, where the Martian moon's pass in front of the sun, but they're not total. But they're not eclipses. total, that's right. And the no. reason has to do with the fact that the moon just happens to be positioned as, at, a, at a far enough away position from the Earth that it is the same size in the sky as the sun is 93 million miles away. So, uh, if you do a little experiment and you take your thumb and you hold it out at arm's length and you you block out the light the disc from the sun that's about a half a degree okay and you do that again with the full moon and you'll see that they're identically matched up now there's a there's a small variation sometimes the moon is a little bit closer sometimes it's a little bit further away then you get things called annular eclipses and stuff like that but but uh it just so happens that out of just really coincidence that the moon happens to be the same apparent size, not the same actual size, but the same apparent size uh, as the sun is in the sky. And that only happens, as far as I can tell, I'm, I have, I, I'm sure I'll be corrected if I say something wrong here, but I don't think it happens anywhere else. The other moons of the solar system, compared with their distances to the sun, uh, don't match up like this. It's weird. It's really kind of freaky. <laughs> now... Though, we also know that the moon is gradually escaping the Earth. It's actually gradually going away. So in another quarter of a million years, the moon will be far enough away that solar, total solar eclipses will no longer be possible because the moon will have backed up away from the Earth in its rotation around the, or in its revolution around the Earth. So enjoy it while you can. You only have a quarter million years uh, to get these under your belt. So... <laughs> there's that um so yeah that's that that is that is a good point adam it really is it, they're, they're the yeah ken uh Lofton saying in the chat that uh for this eclipse coming up the angular size of the moon will be 0.544 degrees and the angular size of the sun will be 0.528 degrees so very similar Thank you for figuring that out for us. That's that's great. That's uh, that's what I love about you guys. You guys don't just uh, take people's words for it. You actually do the math. That's what I love. <laughs> so um, yeah. So the yeah, that's really good, Ken. So thanks for doing that. I appreciate it. Um, he pow. Wait, wait, where'd you go? Hang on. Um, someday astronauts should switch out and replace our moon with Jupiter's moon Europa, so that the ice can melt. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think I think that might be a little too scary. Um, but yeah, if we could do, I mean, we would at least know for sure if there's uh, life on Europa, wouldn't we? If we could do that. Um, so yeah. 
So is there, um, oh, I know what else I wanted to, to bring up. Hang on, I have to make myself big here. So I just read today, um, by the way, uh, if you look in the link in the description box on both YouTube and Facebook and um, uh, Twitch and stuff, there is a link to uh, the, I, the the solar system app from NASA. So download that. There's also a link to a another app which you can get. I just found out about it today. It's called Eclipse 2017, and it's put out by Harvard Smithsonian uh, Institute or Center for Astrophysics. And it's a really cool app. Uh, once you, it, this is on. Uh, it's for, like I said, Android and, and uh, I, uh, iOS. And if with the minute you get you 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 pull it up, you it, you comes up with a countdown on how long before the eclipse uh, will occur. And then there's a really cool interactive map. If you hit the interactive map, it loads up, and uh, you can click on where you're gonna be. Uh, during the eclipse or where you'd like to be during the eclipse there's the there's the full map right there and you can zoom in I'm gonna try and do this without looking directly at it and if you just I'm just zooming in oh this is hard okay and if you click on a spot in there I just clicked in there and it what happens then is it tells you the start of the eclipse there's a whole bunch of times Start of the eclipse, start of the total, the partial eclipse, the total eclipse, the maximum eclipse when that's going to occur, and then then the end times. And it's really kind of neat. And if you there's a view button, and if you click on view, then this it starts up Sky Safari and gives you the view for that particular time and location. Uh, Regulus is going to be out. That's cool to know. That's in the constellation Leo. Uh, so you'll be able to see a bright star during the eclipse and awesome. you'll also see other things too well you'll see a lot of stars actually um you might even see i wonder if you'll see venus um i don't i don't know i have to I have to see I have to pull up stellarium and take a look um but uh this will and it shows you the view of the um and there's a little slider at the bottom i don't know if i can do the slider this way yeah, if you move the slider around, it will simulate the eclipse for you, and you can just move it around, and play with it. So uh, that link to this also is in the description box. It's a really good app. I would highly recommend checking it out. It's fun to play with. It's free, and um, you know these are what's I can't it, believe all the free resources. What's it called again, Tony? Oh, it's Eclipse Twenty Seventeen, and. It's put out by uh, Harvard uh, Center for Astrophysics. Uh, Smithsonian, too. I'm sorry. It, the Smithsonian also has their name on it. So it's for cool. both. So, yeah, I would... Uh, so I would highly recommend that as well. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about going outside and viewing these things. Um, what do you guys have? Do you guys have any... Uh, any, any advice for people who, want, you know, what should they bring? Should they bring any equipment, telescopes? <clears throat> what would you guys, what would you guys advise? Well, if it's, I... if it's your very first time um, viewing an, an eclipse, just take, um, take on yourself some um, eclipse glasses and Macron eyeballs. If you're going to, pick, if you're going to start messing about with um, telescopes and cameras and what have you, you're going to miss the thing. I that that's right, and that's a great point. Um, you're going to be fussing about with all of your knobs and gadgets and making sure you're all set up, and before you know it, you're going to miss it. So that's a great point. Um, do you guys have a pair of these? I've yeah. got some somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So you could probably get these free. Um, I haven't really looked for sources. I know NASA and a lot of other places uh, are are you can give them out if you happen to catch them at a booth somewhere. Um, I've had this since my, I used to have a whole bunch and I've given them all away over the years. This is the only pair I've got left. But as I said in space fan news last week, um, don't just buy these from anywhere, but there's a, there's a, uh, a good, if you go to the American astronomical society page, or you go to the NASA page and you look up eclipse precautions, they will, they have, believe me, they have a ton of warnings and things that you should do and how you should be careful about viewing them. But all these are is a little, they're just cardboard 
with pieces of mylar, but not just any old mylar, um, like in the balloons or something. It's not like that. Uh, it's, it's thicker. And all it's designed to do is to reflect most of the light from the sun. That's why they're, they're silvered and let through just a small, tiny percentage of light from the sun. And all you're going to see when you look through one of these is you'll see the white disk of the sun. You might see some sp sunspots if there's any really big ones. And you've got really good eyes. <laughs> um, you might see a sunspot or two. But really you're just going to see the moon go in front of the sun and, and cut it and cut it out. So or, And cut out the disk of the sun. Um, I think I have a, a quick view of what I'm... What I'm yeah, here's so this this view of the sun that I showed you earlier, um, this or this view from the Earth. I mean, this is what you would see through one of those pairs of glasses. Okay, uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of features on the sun. You'll see some limb darkening. That you'll see how the the sun um, is is uh, it has darkened limbs due to its spherical shape. This is also something you can, if you've run across any flat sun people who insist that the sun is also flat, uh, this is one <laughs> way you can show them that it isn't uh, because it has limb darkening along the edges. Uh, and so this is what you would see through one of those, um, one of those pairs of glasses. Now, there's another really cheap and easy way to look at the eclipse. I'm going to show you this. Uh, it's my favorite. And... Um, it's it's about as cheap as it gets. Um, let's see if I can pull this up. I don't like telling people it's it's a little bit scary for to look straight up at the sun. So if you don't have a pair of these glasses, but you do have a piece of cardboard, I don't know if you can see it in my little thing here, but there's a piece of cardboard being held up, and somebody took a pencil and they poked a hole in it, and then they took that hole or that piece of cardboard. And they shined it down on the ground on another piece of paper. And what you probably can't see very well on the slide, but you can see on the day of the eclipse, is you'll be seeing the eclipse. The actual eclipse will be happening on the ground. This is my preferred way to tell people to look at the eclipse. Because you've got your back to the sun, you're looking on the ground, and you're seeing everything you would see with a, uh, with a pinhole that you would see with those glasses. And so... I'm very, um, I'm very, I'm very much a proponent of of doing this. What do you guys think? Yeah, I've tried it. I tried it uh, a couple of years ago when we had a partial eclipse here in the UK, and it works. I managed to make it work with, uh, yeah, a bit of paper, a, a hole, and a, a bit of whiteboard. Yeah, and now, yeah. go ahead. It's easy, and uh, you don't blind yourself doing it. Yeah, and it's very safe. This is probably yeah. the safest way of looking at the sun, uh, the eclipse through the sun. Now, here's another way. And I'm going to actually make a video about this later this week. Probably I'll post it on Friday, where I'm going to take out my AstroScan telescope, and I'm going to project the sun onto into the telescope and onto a piece of paper. But what you see here in the middle of the Grand Canyon, which is like beautiful to begin with, but here is a small telescope. It looks like about 120 millimeter or so diameter uh, lens or a catadioptric telescope. Anyway, it's small and compact, sitting on a tripod. And it's got an eyepiece on the end of it. And they've masked off most of the light coming in through it because... When you're looking at the sun through a telescope, you don't need big aperture. You just need the optics that focus it. So you, they've cut out most of the sun's light from the aperture. And then it's projected onto a piece of cardboard. This is just one of those flat boxes you fold up for uh, making um, uh, your office supplies. Um, you know, this is a lid. And you just uh, project it right on there. And there it is. It's huge. Now, the advantage here is that you can get a large image that many people can see at once. So if you're in a crowd and you want to show the eclipse, many people can gather around this and see it. Um, they can take photos of this and, and you know share it on Facebook, things like that. You get, so the advantage here is that you get a bigger, physically larger image projected because of the telescope optics. The disadvantage is, is it's hard on your telescope. It's dangerous. 
and you don't ever, ever, ever under any circumstances look through the eyepiece. You have to line it up by looking at the shadow that your telescope makes against the, on the ground, and you want to minimize that shadow. I'll show again in my video how I'm going to do this, but the um, you don't you'll be very tempted to look through the eyepiece to see if you're there. And you don't ever want to do that. So this is scary no. from that respect. Uh, but this is you called eyepiece projection. Your- you don't want to burn your telescope <laughs> optics either. That's another good want, point. If they if they don't, don't want, get hot, that's another reason for blocking out this, stopping down this aperture. Yeah, you don't want your um, your telescope to get too hot either. That's a good point. Well, I've, se- I've seen the results of somebody um, pointing his telescope at the sun before putting a solar filter on the front of it, Ooh. and the back of his. Um, Back of the eyepiece was just melted. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I can remember when I was trying to line it back in the early days, I would put my hand above the eyepiece to try and see if I could see the disc on my hand, and it burned my hand. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of dangers with so much light coming through an optical system. You've just got to be careful. Um, well, Gal- Galileo, when he um, first built his um, telescope, um, it was only um, a ten or ten to twenty times magnification, but with it, he was able to um, see sp- sunspots in the evening when the sun was low down. Even that damaged his eyes. Yeah, he had a lot of eye problems in uh, later life. And you, what happens, folks, is it burns your retina. It burns a hole in your retina. That little tiny disc of of whatever's being focused in the focal plane of your eyepiece is going through your your iris and searing a hole it's the same thing that happens when you look at a laser if you've ever known of someone or heard of an injury where people have looked i've got a laser uh injury it's the same thing that intense light burned a hole in their retina now it may not burn the entire retina in which case you're blind uh, in that eye, it may just burn a pinhole uh, in your retina, in which case that part of your eye is blind. Um, either way, it's bad. It's a bad. It's a bad situation. So it's a very similar kind of safety issue uh, is dealing with those high power two watt lasers or whatever it is they've got now. They've got some lasers now that scare the bejesus out of me. Um, with how powerful they are! Well, uh, well, the telescope that Galileo used was a um, white crappy little thing that you wouldn't even uh, yeah, look twice like at. Yeah, it was like this big around. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, it, yeah it's, it, nowadays, it would be seen as a, a joke of a toy. Um, and it still damaged his eyesight. So, That's right. You know, be careful. That's right. Um, so, I'm, I, this, I was showing this to um, John and Adam before, before the... Uh, hangout started this is probably the only thing i have left from my me 10 inch schmidt cassegrain telescope this is there's a solar fi- the solar filter i bought uh it's all i have left but you can see that it's got a three inch diameter um this is glass not mylar uh reflective um aperture on it that's designed to go off axis uh but uh, uh, it basically just turns my 10 inch telescope into a three inch telescope and then what does get through 99 or some ridiculous amount of the actual amount of light gets reflected from that uh, surface and only a small amount makes it into my telescope optical system this is the kind of solar filter you want to buy uh, for a large telescope because you just don't need all of that aperture now I bought this from Thousand Oaks Optical God, must have been 15, 20 years ago. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, still doing with it. I can't use it uh, on much, except I could maybe put it over my astro scan, which I might do. Um, but it's you know this is designed for a large telescope, and I forget what I paid for it. It was it wasn't cheap. It was a few hundred dollars, I think. So um, <laughs> what I should do is try and sell it now because people will want it for the uh, for the telescope for their uh, for the eclipse. But if you're having trouble finding a solar filter and if you have a 10 inch schmidt cassegrain and you want one uh i don't know email me and we'll we'll talk because uh, i don't have a need for it anymore so the um hang on. just got a telephone call for some reason okay so there's that so uh solar filters 
You could buy them for the telescopes. Only buy from reputable brands. We're not really going to go into that in this Hangout, though. Maybe next week when we'll talk about telescope designs. And maybe uh, John and Adam can give you some of their recommendations for what they think you should do. I also have a recommendation that I'll, that I'll talk about next time. Any comments, guys, from anybody? No, I've seen people make their own solar filters quite easily, you know, out of a bit of card. Yeah, there you go. Ah, okay. Um, okay, um, yeah, so Jeffrey Scott is like, sadly, no, the next... Oh, wait a second. Uh, I, I, I R. sorry, guy, Rai, he goes asking, <laughs> will it be visible like this in India? No, it won't be. Unfortunately not. Um, Jeffrey Scott's going, try Clemson University in South Carolina. That's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. I might just do that. Uh, they'll have a big campus. I'm sure they'll have plenty of spots to set up a telescope. I'm not going to probably set up a telescope. I'm just going to go look. Uh, and I might live stream it. Um, well, it's, I won't, it's not might. I will live stream. I will live stream it. But um, yeah, the good thing about Clemson is that at least they might have internet. So I could I could leech off, mooch off of their wireless. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good suggestion. Thank you. Um, let's see what's on. Tw anything on Twitch? No, I'm not seeing anything on Twitch. Okay. So let us know your questions, guys. If you're going to see the eclipse, let us know. What are you going to see? Where are you going to go? Where are you? And uh, do you have any plans uh, for the eclipse? Um, many. What are you doing over there? Are you showing something, John? Oh. Oh uh, well, I just put down um, some bad uh, solar filter. Ah yes. Why don't you explain what that is? Uh, well, this is uh, one of the cheapest ways of um, seeing the sun through your telescope safely. Um, it costs in the UK twenty pounds for an A4 sheet. Now you've got to be very careful when you handle it. But fortunately. Now these are mylar filters. They're not glass, right? No. Is that these a... are, it looks like baker, like baking foil. Now I can hold it now because it's got um, protective um, plastic front and back. You take that off, then you never touch it again with your fingers, otherwise you'll damage it. And it's a double. It looks. I can't even see um, any any touch light through it. But it's a um, double layer of very fine mesh, um, which blocks out over 99% of the light coming through it, um, making it safe for you to put onto a, a telescope and view through, view through a normal eyepiece. Okay. Um, how, do you remember how much it cost you? Um, in the UK, it's um, 20, 20 pounds for an Air sheet. Okay. So 20 pounds, that might be $28 or so US. You can get it in the US. Yeah. I had the paper on it I had last time. Let's, let's see so what you would like, do with, um, what would you do with that, John? You would, you would you cut it into a circle and mount it somehow on something? Or do you just hold it up against um, the sun? How, what would you do with it once you've got it? Now, I've got a... Uh, Page here that I could. No, yeah, if I uh, share screen. Now, uh, if you can see that. Oh, I see. Hang on just a sec. Let me get from. Uh, I didn't. Uh, let's see. Exit full screen. I don't know if people are seeing this. Let me, because of the way yeah. I've got this, I've got this done. Can you guys see that okay? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not so bad. Now, this is one, uh, the type that you buy, but it's made out of um, exactly the same stuff. Okay. And this one, it just clamps onto the um, front of your telescope. Um, I prefer to make me on out of cardboard. Um, yeah, so 53 yes. pounds, that's not bad. Um for... Well, yeah, that, that, that's the one that I'd have to get for um, my 102mm um, refractor. And it goes, uh, yeah, so you can buy them for lots of different size scopes. And it is one of the more economical alternatives. The glass ones tend to be very expensive. Um, yeah. 
But yeah, but, um, the thing is, um, these will still um, get damaged eventually, and and you'll need to replace the um, silver part of it. I prefer to um, uh, make mine out of um, cardboard. It's just as good and a damn sight cheaper. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. That's good advice. So, yeah, that's another way if you've got a small telescope to to look at these things. And then, then you can look directly into your eyepiece uh, to see the eclipse. But i got to tell you, folks, I've done this many, many times. And to me, you don't get that much out of it. You might see the sunspots. That's the one thing that you would see through a telescope while the eclipse is going on that you wouldn't see uh, perhaps by just projecting it on the ground. But even then, I've seen sun sunspots projected in that telescope projection method. So, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it, if, I just, if you want to get a solar filter, then yeah, that's, the, that's a most, the most economical way to do it. But like John says, you want to be careful because they do degrade. And what you need to do with yeah. these, any of these Mylar-type filters is you want to periodically look through them uh at something else besides the sun to check for pinhole leaks you don't you don't want to you don't want to have a leak going on in there um at all and they're so easy to get you know a, a pin uh pinhole uh in those things um how how long will totality last about five minutes it will yeah, it's usually, usually about four. yeah depending four on where you are i think in south four, carolina yeah. it's going to be about two and a half three minutes um it might be longer in Tennessee, I think. So, yeah, I, I agree with what you said earlier, that you don't want to be spending your time messing about with your camera or your phone. Yeah. Or, or the, there's, there's nothing wrong with taking a few shots, but and you can always try and set up beforehand, you know, if you've got excessive camera equipment that you want. Yeah. You put it on automatic, and then you... You can enjoy the eclipse and let the the camera take care of itself. Basically. Yeah, and just you know, let NASA handle all the the sexy pictures. You know, that's what I'm. That's going to be my advice too for when we go to talk about imaging in this Hangout series. Is we're gonna eventually you're going to want to start taking pictures through your telescope, and I'm going to tell you, well, why, and and I'm going to ask you why, and then you know we'll go about uh, figuring out what you're hoping to get out of imaging, um, because you're not going to take the kind of pictures. Well, that's not true. I can't say that. There's been some amateur pictures that have been absolutely stunning. So you you probably can eventually get good enough to to make it take a lot of great pictures, but they're not going to rival things that what I don't know what you see through a Hubble or or something like that. So anyway, um, imaging is fun, but but it's expensive. Cool. And yeah, and and you really don't want to take away the joy of just being out there in the eclipse and and looking up. One final thing I want to talk about here with, with respect to this topic is um, a lot of people have asked, or some people are going uh, to try and look at the eclipse. They might be welders. They might have their own welding masks. Um, if you, these, these, there's two, these are direct methods of looking at the sun. This is you looking up straight at the sun. One of them is using those glasses. The other one is if you have a welder's mask. It is safe to look at the sun through a welder's mask if you have a shade of 12, 13, or 14 uh, in there. If you've got any, uh, and apparently I'm not a welder, but from what I've learned, what I've heard is that those are not common shades. So if you're going to Harbor Freight and thinking you're going to just get yourself one of those inexpensive uh, welder's masks to look at the eclipse with, double check the shade. It's got to be a 12 or higher. This this slide is saying 14. That's to be super safe. Uh, but the AAS is recommending nothing lower than 12. So you've got to know your shade. You can't just trust that, you know, it's going to be enough. If you don't know the shade, don't use them. Um, so that's my advice on using welder's glasses. It is safe. In fact, John Dobson, the inventor of the Dobsonian um, mount, <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> he actually invented a he built a solar telescope using welder's glass and he put it he mounted it at the end of the telescope tube and that was his solar telescope and it worked like a champ he used it in the san francisco when he was uh doing his thing at the sidewalk astronomers club so it's a it's a very respectable way to look at the sun you just got to be darn sure you've got the right kind of glass oh 
Have you? Do you guys know if they still sell those solar filters? They used to call sun filters and moon filters, and they screwed into the eyepiece. Do you know if they still sell those? I don't think they do. Um, yeah, I got well, them. Well, I got them a couple of times with um, telescopes back in the seventies. Right. Sometimes they would come even, with the like, telescope. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, even then, it, it knew enough. So just put the nail through the buggers and throw them in the bin. Exactly. And um, these, these, by the way, if you don't know what we're talking about, they're little filters. They're about the same diameter as an eyepiece, and you, they're designed to be screwed on to the eyepiece itself. And then you put the eyepiece in the focuser, and then you're supposed to be able to look at the sun through that. That is a good way to go blind. Do you want to say why, John? Yeah, it, <laughs> well, it screwed, it screwed onto the, um, the front of the eyepiece, um, the bit nearest your eyeball. The ones I got anyway, yep. and you're gonna get all that heat coming through um, that lens, and it's just gonna break it. They'll crack them. That's and right. as soon as that breaks, you're not going to um, be able to get your eye out of the way fast enough. They're probably. I can't believe they were actually sold. To be honest, they're so dangerous. They always <laughs> crack, and they were the most dangerous thing you could do. Imagine, folks, all you have a ten inch or an eight inch or even a six inch telescope. And you bought one, and it came with one of these little filters. You're thinking, okay, great, I'm going to be able to plug this in and see the sun. And you do that, and you have six inches of aperture collecting sunlight that is designed to be looking at planets and dim <laughs> nebulae. And it's magnifying, all, it's collecting all that solar energy and focusing it to a point. And anybody who's ever burned ants on the ground with a magnifying glass knows that stuff gets hot fast. And it's all concentrated right there at the focus of the telescope, which is where you put the eyepiece. It is the single dumbest idea since the Earth being flat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah, if you've ever seen those, like John says, break them, put a nail through it, and throw them away. And the reason you, don't, you want to destroy them and, instead of just throwing them away is you don't want someone else to use them. You don't want anybody else to put those Sorry. in your yeah. telescope. So, yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's it. Any any comments, uh, Adam, that we, you want to highlight? <laughs> Sounds like a, a good way to melt a telescope. That. <laughs> yeah. I know you can get moon filters that go on the other end of the telescope that uh, can dim the light of the moon. For uh, when you're oh yeah, they go on the um, other. Yeah, they go on the other end of the eyepiece, a bit that goes yeah. into the telescope. Yeah, that's... And it, it's basically a kind of neutral density filter, which um, reduces the um, brightness of the moon, um, especially when it's approaching um, a full moon. Yeah. Because it, 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 it is bright, and it can be overpowering. Yeah. You wouldn't want to use something like that for <laughs> looking at an eclipse, oh, would you? No. no. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay. So let's see. Um, is this some battle toads? <laughs> Sorry. Um, is, is commenting or asking, I live in Winston Salem area of North Carolina. As we know, Greenville, South Carolina is supposed to get full totality. What do you think our eclipse experience will be like here? Well, let's just take a look, shall we? So here, let's pull this up. Now, you need to get this app, folks, and start playing around with it, okay? So here it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kansas City. I'm going to zoom in. Let me just zoom way in. Um, whoa. My computer is, like, totally maxed out here. It does not like this. All right. So let me just keep going. Zoom in some more. Columbia whoa sorry folks whoa oh, man. My, <laughs> my computer is not happy it is doing too much it's streaming it's encoding and i can't it's not responding but i i'll try to zoom in let's see if i can do that let me first select that area i don't know where that is it's somewhere in north carolina and if i keep going zooming in zooming in there's Columbia, South Carolina. I'm thinking I might go there. Um, okay, let's go a little bit more. A little bit more. Ah, Greenville. Is that what you said? Uh, Winston-Salem. Uh, As we know, Greenville, South Carolina is yeah, supposed to get Greenville. full totality. What do you think of our eclipse uh, chances? Ah, come on. 
I'm really pushing this. <clears throat> Winston Salem area, North yeah, Carolina. So Charlotte. Oh, you're up here. Well, it's showing me Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I don't know how far you are. I don't know where Winston Salem is, folks. Um, within the state, that's as far as I can zoom in. So here you see South Carolina. Here's the swath. So North Carolina is up here, Roanoke, Virginia, uh, and Charlotte, North Carolina. So if you look here, let's say you're near, I don't know, there's North Carolina, somewhere up there. Um, you're going to see a partial eclipse. A partial eclipse, but it's going to be really cool. See, you see how you see how oh. the top part there, the top part up here is not quite covered. It's still going to be pretty cool. It's going to be yeah, really that's, nice. Uh, that's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Uh, totality uh, will be, you're right outside of it. Now, again, I don't know where Winston-Salem is, but, but North Carolina is right up here. And um, you're not going to be too, what's going to really determine is your latitude. So let's say if you go a little bit further north, see how as I go further north, I start to see more and more of the sun's disk. So, depending on how far north you are from from uh, Greenville, then you're probably going to see a pretty cool thing. It's probably going to be nice. Um, Keep get, see how far north you can go, Tony, <clears throat> without losing the eclipse. All right, so here's I think Roanoke, that's somewhere in Canada. Here's Roanoke, Virginia, uh, Pittsburgh. Whoa, whoa, uh, wow! Even where am I? I have to zoom out. I apologize That's for Canada. my computer. I was not meant to. It's just there's just too much going on here between streaming and running the video conference and this app. Well, it's just doing too well, much. I think you're still going to get um, okay. Oh yeah. Well, actually, yeah. If you look at um, so here's Harrisburg, Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania is going to be seeing a good part of it too. Um, but you can see the shadows. It's going to go all the way up into Maine. Um, you'll be able to see it. Canada's going to see it well past uh, the Great Lakes. Um, so, you know, if you're up in Maine, let's say what, you're going to see half of it in Maine. Um, in the Bahamas, they're going to see uh, about half, about 75% of it. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be... A, everybody in the country can see something. Uh, look at this. I mean, you can just see the map. Um, it's completely covered in shadow all just along, down the... into Mexico, way up into yeah. Canada. Uh, British Columbia and those guys, I think Frazier lives up there. He'll be seeing. Here's what Frazier's going to see. Uh, He'll be. Uh, I think it's going to be totality. He's going to see yeah. that. Okay. But I'm going to beat him because I'm going to go to South Carolina and I'm going to see. Whoa. I'm going to see that right yeah. there. That's my, I'm going to see that mamma jamma right there. Fraser's going to be in uh, St. Louis. He's not going to miss out. Oh, he's going to be in St. Louis. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he's going to see, he's going to see totality. I'm just saying where he lives up there. So, <clears throat> okay. So there you go. Um, I'm in Madison, Georgia. Columbia, South Carolina will be a quick hop for me on I-20. That's right. Um, uh, that'll be the place, to, that'll be the thing to do. Uh, it's just, you could even leave in the morning because it won't start uh, in South Carolina until about, um, well, totality will be somewhere around, depending on where in, in South Carolina you are, um, about noontime, lunchtime, something like that. So, that's where I'm going to be uh, checking it out. So, play with this app, folks. It's called Map uh, Eyes on the Solar System. You can get it for free. Uh, you, if you want to know what you're going to see and about how much you're going to see, uh, this will tell you exactly. Also, this app I was telling you about uh, will do it as well. Um, so, I highly recommend this. This oh, I've turned it off now. Um, the uh, Eclipse 2017 app that you can get from uh, Harvard Smithsonian. Um, uh, Center for Astrophysics. So it's another really good app uh, to play with. Um, let's see. Uh, what would be Ken Logsdon? What would be a good long-range weather forecasting site? None. There aren't any. I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of weather equipment you've got. The models. 
I don't believe any weather model, first of all, past three days. They try to give you a seven-day forecast. I don't believe it. Um, the chances of, of that being true are, unless you're in the middle of a big system that's going to last a really long time, um, I wouldn't trust any, any, any forecast past three days. So we really won't know until ne- weekend after next um, what the weather's going to be like. But hopefully not cloudy throughout the entire United States. So that would suck. <laughs> I was reading about uh, Google informatics recently. People are already Googling, trying to desperately trying to Google the weather forecast of the eclipse. Yeah, it's too soon. I wouldn't believe it's anybody just, uh, trying to no. do that now. I mean, just here in, the United, or here in Florida, for example, this time of year, every time in the afternoon, right about now, we start getting really big thunderstorms that pop up. We don't know where they're going to happen or, uh, you know, what time, but they happen all over the place. And if you just happen to be lucky and or unlucky, uh, you're going to be in the middle of under sitting underneath a thunderstorm, uh, during the eclipse. So, um, nothing you can do about it. It's just, I don't think anybody can predict that with any, any degree of accuracy. They can say there's going to be 70% chance of thunder showers, but they're not going to tell you exactly where, uh, and exactly what time. So, Unfortunately, Ken, I don't have any answer for you. I'm sorry to say. Um, so, uh, let's see. What else we got here? It would be awesome if you do a live stream. Thank you. I hope you'll watch it. I am going to do a live stream. Um, and I will do it from wherever I'm at. Rain or shine. I promise. We'll just chat if, it, if it's raining. Um, I need it for my, my mead. Oh, you're talking about the solar filter here? Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. What should I do about this, guys? I mean, this is, I mean, people could use this. Um, give it away. So I, should, I should it. give it a, I, w- w- do a contest. Is that what I should do? Cause I don't it need it. Won't. And I, I should give it, we got, I got to hurry though. Cause time is getting running short. Um, yeah. If someone wants it. Yeah, I should, I should, I should figure out a good way to get it out to people. Um, comment on the video, comment on this hangout why you want it and what kind of telescope you've got. And I'll reach out to you. Uh, that's about all I can think of off the top of my head right now. Thumbs up the video, comment on this video, share it with your friends and, uh, and let people know that, uh, that, that we're out here doing these hangouts every other Tuesday or every Tuesday or however long we decide we're going to do this. So, okay guys, well, I guess we're done this week. Um, we're sort of out of time. Uh, is there any comments or questions guys that I've missed that you guys have noticed? I'm just going to go look one more time. My main piece of advice is simply to enjoy. Enjoy it. It doesn't happen often. Make could, sure you enjoy it. I couldn't agree more. And um, Jeffrey Scott on on uh, Facebook is asking, what are our thoughts on solar binoculars? Do they make those? Oh, yes. Um, in America, they're, they're pretty cheap. About $35 or so. I don't have Which anything sounds, to say about them. I, I I did not know they made them. Um, that sounds too cheap. Really, it does. That well, sounds well, a little bit scary. Yeah, um, Adam, in in the in the United Kingdom, well, well over seventy pounds. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> but um, yeah, they, they sound good. If they're cheaper, I'd buy it. But I'd buy a pair. They're only, they're only um, something like five times magnification. Um, but better than nothing. Well, based on what I'll tell you, what I already don't like about them is that think about how you use binoculars, right? You're holding them up to your face. Let's say they're small ones, and you're you're pointing your your face right at the sun. And you know, are you gonna get a good? Are you gonna do a good job sealing your eyes around? You know, the the seat them in the in your eye sockets good enough to not get a lot of extraneous light, or just staring at the sun? You know with nothing is harmful. So I just, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I like those. I don't know if I like that idea. Um, you you have to really be good at how you use them. I would put them in my eyes first and then look up before I would just look up and then put them out, you know, on my eyes. So I'd have to think about it and see, and then I'd be really scared about the coatings. Presumably they've got some really good coatings on them. Um, but for $35, I'm not sure I'm going to trust that. So, Interesting. I did not know they made those. I did not know. So there you go, Jeffrey. There's my thoughts on it. Uh, okay. Looks like we got everybody. Um, hey, I didn't see Galaxy today. She must be on vacation. Holiday. Was she around? Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I didn't see you on um, on here. Yeah. Well, we missed you, Galaxia. I hope you're having fun. Hope you're doing something fun in the month of August. Um, okay, so we're going to be... I've got another... It's all Eclipse all the time right here now at Deep Astronomy. On Thursday, Carol Christian has managed to get member astronomers from the National Solar Observatory for our afternoon coffee hangout this Thursday, 3 p.m., and we are going to be talking about what they're expecting from the National Solar Observatory from uh, 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 professional astronomers. The biggest scientific boon of an eclipse is being able to directly observe and photograph the solar corona, which is this very tenuous atmosphere above the chromosphere of the sun. And it is one of the few times when you can do it cheaply. <laughs> There's a lot of expensive optics that go into blocking out the, sun, the solar disk and looking at it indirectly. But because of an eclipse, the entire area is also dark you get really stunning images of the solar corona. And so the scientific uses of a solar corona, I mean, of a, of a solar eclipse are, you know, just incalculable. So join us this Thursday as we talk about that aspect of the eclipse. And then the three of us are coming back on next Tuesday, and we're going to finish up our conversation. I'm going to show you, um, we're going to talk a little bit about projection. I might even actually try to do it. Um, uh, and we're going to, I'm going to, hopefully, I don't know, maybe by then I'll figure out who I'm going to send this solar filter to, uh, and I'll announce it that, uh, hang out as well, but we're going to finish up our conversation, uh, next week on the, uh, eclipse. So we hope you guys will join us and you guys want to add anything else? Well, no, okay. just enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoy it. Okay. Keep folks. looking up. All right. Oh, okay. Let, send us out there, John. Why don't you do it this time? Got to do it right now. Thank you. No, all. no, I'll let you do it. No, come on. <laughs> come on, John. Come on, John. Hey, keep looking up. There you hey, go. Thank you, you all for watching. And, you, you didn't say as always. as always. As always. As always. Keep looking. As always. Keep looking up. There you go. <laughs>